here I am. <laughs> Sorry, light was in shot. Uh, where was I? This is a take three. I'm not doing it again. Hello, guys. Hello, Tubesters. That was my, my usual uh, catchphrase. Uh, welcome to another one of my videos. Yep, I normally say that one. Good, let's tick that box. Uh, yeah, we, this is a... Let's quickly we'll see him in more detail soon. This is a prone, i.e. lying down figure. The military is prone. Uh, a prone a United States Marine Corps figure. Uh, again, in my series for the Battle of Hue, uh, 1968, uh, Republic of Vietnam. Uh, this is going to be a paint-along. It's going to be all in one. So I'm shooting this bit now before I've started. Uh, how long the video is going to be? I have no idea. It might end up as a voiceover video if I can't get it completed, which I don't think I'm going to. Uh, um, time constraints. And uh, it's a bit of a practice for a voiceover. I took George's uh, advice, although I'd already done it. And I'd, I'd been on uh, just to try and do a voiceover on a, on a video. And... Uh, he advised me, oh, there'll be something for whatever program you're using. Well, I, I'd been doing it for weeks and nothing, and I've been practicing and nothing. And uh, I've had another go. Just I just uploaded one of my photographs, not a video. I didn't have anything to, to upload. So I just put one of my, a couple of my photographs up and put a voiceover on that. And it's a bit rough around the edges, but it, it works. So I am going to do this as I normally would do, just do a bit of painting, show it, or paint a bit on camera, whatever. Uh, but... Um, it might change over to a voiceover if I can't get it completed and that means there's too much it's only me and my wife and my pop here but there's always too much noise. my wife will have the TV going and up down up down um, she'll be calling the pop uh, just general household you know stuff that you can't have in the background of a, of a video so it's just distracting and annoying uh, so well, it might improve the quality of my videos but uh, yeah so uh, we, we, if I get it all done if I wasn't rambling so much right now, maybe we'd already be five minutes ahead. But and I'm rolling back again. Yeah, uh, so let's let's go with it as a. I'll be chatting to it, and I might change it if I can change it into a voiceover if I have to. So, figure is Empress Miniatures. It'll be in the description. Uh, people don't read the descriptions because I'm always asked, "Where can I get this? What is this?" And I think if you just read the title or the description, it's usually in there. I don't normally leave it out. Anyway. 28 millimeter metal uh, United States Marine Corps figures from their uh, Vietnam War range from Empress Miniatures, a UK uh, they, uh, a company that, that make their own figures, as in this case. And they also, I believe, I'm not really understanding it, so I'd be careful what I say, but they're like an umbrella for some smaller guys that, that sell their stuff through them, I believe, uh, or they might have bought them out. I don't know, really. Uh, but go over and check Empress Miniatures out. I've never had anything but decent service from them. Uh, the, the one mistake that I had if way back in those other Vietnam videos, uh, I had some Viet Cong figures that kept sending me the same ones. They sorted that straight away once they knew the, what the subject, uh, the problem was. So can't fault them for any of that. I've got no connection with them. You know, I'm not painting all these figures of the Vietnam range. I'm just painting, as in I've bought them. Uh, I'm not painting for anybody. But I like to give a shout out to companies that, uh, as I say, it's too easy to not companies. So I do prefer, if possible, to be positive, if you can be. Right, let's get down to the bench and we'll talk through this figure again before I even put a brush to it. Right guys, thanks for joining me at the bench. Uh, we have our figure here. Um, in fact, let's get a bit of a pointy stick. Oh, we'll have to use this pink one for now. Not very Marine Corps uh, friendly, but never mind. Right. Uh, Apologies in advance. I decided to put a bit of a base on this one because I needed to see where he, you know, uh, get some context to work in my own head what he was lying on and all this type of stuff. Uh, if you don't know, Hue is a city uh, in the north of Vietnam and, well, the north of the Republic of Vietnam as it was then, and the battle was mainly there, there was battles going into Hue where the Viet Cong and the NVA were trying to stop them. Uh, relieving the city uh, while they uh, more or less rounded up and killed a, thousand, a few thousand people on the, in the inside but they they tried to stop them getting in there was definitely firefights and, and battles going on in the 
what you would say the classic Vietnam type of you know rice paddies, uh, heavily wooded to jungle type areas. Uh, but Huey was predominantly uh, street battles, hence my little bit of a rubble wall there. Now I put all this down, not thinking uh, how I uh, how I was actually going to. You guys were going to see the figure as I was painting it with half a wall in there, but. Uh, I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And something I've just noticed, which you always do when you get start on camera, uh, I've got a fair bit of sand residue uh, in this wall, in the wall, in the uh, leg area here. I'm going to just try and uh, and get some of that out. If I can't, it'll just have to be painted in with mud later on. Uh, I'm going for, again, it's always handy to have an idea in your head what, what you want to, oh, before I go on, uh, one slight uh, change to what the, the figure normally has. Uh, a commentator on one of the Vietnam videos I've done previously had asked me why didn't I drill out the the uh, sight stroke, you know, call it Caroline hand I suppose, but you know, the, the sight. Uh, and I'd said to him, you know, I think he might have suggested a 1.4 something uh, drill bit. Well, on this type of metal, they'd just be shattering left, right and centre. Uh, but I thought, no, give it a go, I'm up for a challenge, and I drilled this out with a 1.7 drill bit, that's the biggest that I could I could get uh, without, I mean, it was already on the cusp of breaking up the site, as you can see. Uh, it just did it, uh, I chain drilled it three across, and then three back th from the other side, and then three back through the other side, and that broke through, and then I cleaned it out with the sharp uh, scalpel tip, and then cleaned it out again with a uh, you know rat, fat, rat tail file. Uh, so a round file with a point on the end. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's done it, and I would do it again. How 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 those drill bits would survive, I'm very dubious about. And as I say, I was on the cusp of of breaking through that. So it's it's up to you whether you go go that far or not. It does improve the look, uh, but uh, you could find yourself with a lot of broken drill bits or a broken side, which you know a bit of plaster card over the top, you know, more or less get you through it uh, with a bit of a groove in it. If you did that, so uh, oh, and the yellow bits is just merely put. Uh, I wanted to cover up around the the, the base. The base is very prominent. Uh, sorry, the the base that the the guy's lying on is very prominent. It's all a bit rushed, really. Uh, but um, I will be adding a bit more scatter to that afterwards. Maybe some spell spent uh, casings of the rounds, uh, things like that. But uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But let's get back to the colours. I'm going to go with slightly greyed out jacket and trousers. Sometimes I do, I've always said to you guys, sometimes mix them up light, dark jackets, because uh, very few times was it a perfect match. Uh, but we're going to go probably with a, an overall grey green look and, uh, you know, slightly desaturated. Uh, so, you know, it's not so vibrant. The colour, the, 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 the colour that you're seeing isn't as vibrant, more greyed out as I'd call it. Uh, we're going to go with a khaki stroke oatmeal uh, combat body armour and uh, we'll mix up the pouches as I usually do. Uh, bandolier, uh, it'll be standard bandolier colour. So yeah, um, that's about all I think I need to have to... Oh, helmet cover, you can get the two types. Oh, I'm off drifting off camera again, sorry guys, I hope you saw that last bit. Uh, helmet cover you can get the was it the turtle which is you'll see me do both types because I like to mix them up which was uh, more or less an original like Korean War type might have even gone back to World War Two, but Korean War type where it's a uh, again more of a khaki with brown ready brown and green on uh, very quite faded and or you go for the woodland pattern which is like almost your standard Vietnam pattern which is like a fairly light green which I, I again I bleach out a bit uh, with uh, the, the woodland colours on there which is like orangey brown and, and dark green and light green not a hundred percent on the on the, uh, the the helmet cover I get a bit arty you see if I was painting the combat body armour uh, green I'd definitely go for the frog pattern that's not turtle pattern it's frog pattern I'd go for the frog pattern, which is the, the darker one. So yeah, we're probably going to do him with a, a woodland pattern, light green helmet cover. Uh, but don't, 
<laughs> no plan survives uh, first contact with the enemy, so uh, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Right, let's crack on. Right, guys, uh, quickly, uh, brushes I'm using are Rosemary & Co. Uh, they literally, while well, we are, 10 0, 10 0, uh, 1, uh, 0, triple zero and three zero. Uh, I really do like using the Rosemary Co brushes. Again, no connection to them, I just like using them. Uh, paint we're going to go for on this one is going to be a Vallejo bronze green. That's the code, I believe. Well, that is, I never remember. So that's RLM 70. And we're going to mix it with some AK RAL uh, Resin Dagrun. Resin Dagrun. <laughs> uh, this colour green, anyway. Uh, it's a, it's like a grey green in my eyes, or a desaturated green, anyway. So let's get on with it. Gav, you need some more. You need some more kitchen paper to take the excess off. Right. Really well prepared here, guys. So I think we will use our, um, no, we'll go for our smaller brush. So we're going to use our zero uh, using a wet palette. We'll put the bronze green down first. Oh, sorry guys, I've got to mess around with the, with the tripod. I use a big like video in tripod uh, that goes up in front of it. Just, well, it's hanging it's eyebrow level with my face, <laughs> so it's not always the the easiest to to work with. But I haven't got anywhere to do all the homemade clamps and and stuff, and you know, putting you know frames over the top of the desk and that. The wife would soon put an embargo on that. Now this bronze colour, I think I've said to you guys before, and I've used it in in some of the uh, other figures. The Marine Corps are quite often photographed in Huawei with their uh, plastic rain gear on, and uh, this is a very good colour for that. Uh, you know, you can highlight it up to make it a bit shinier. Uh, I'm bound to get a lot of bits and bits. Uh, this was a bit of a throw together, really, um, which is a I'm regretting now, uh, as in putting the figure on the base and things. I was rushing. The problem with me is I I juggle so many, so many painting things. I'm painting obviously commission work, uh, painting these on the side for videos, painting, you know, uh, other stuff uh, for myself. So it's. Uh, it's a bit of a nightmare sometimes. Right, I think that's a bellows pocket there. I may be wrong, but we'll call it. We'll call it a bellows pocket on his trousers. We'll say this is his tunic. Not tunic, but I can tell I've been painting a load of Napoleonics, but. His jacket above the trousers. Oh, that's a bellows pocket there, so that isn't a bellows pocket. So that's it could be the sculptor was kind enough to put a comment down in the early vid saying that uh, I'd asked what it was, and he said he'd uh, it was the socks. Uh, you can see photographs of the Marine Corps uh, tying socks to their webbing that contained rations and and. Uh, Spare ammunition, anything really, I suppose. Uh, these boots will be jungle boots, so they'll have uh, they'll have some material down the sides. 
sorry if you hear lots of background noise. It's every time I do one of these videos, something in the street gets worked on. They've got scaffolders, a few doors up, putting scaffolding up, ready for some type of work. A lot of these areas I'll work in some rubber black or something just to darken them up, give some shadow areas in later on. Uh, I'm not going to paint the whole video on a figure on camera, as I say, it just go for hours and I just don't get enough views to warrant the you know, it's very kind of you know, if, you know, maybe five, ten people might watch it and you know, four or five will put a thank you and you know, say oh, you know, nice work and thanks for doing it, but it's it's just so time consuming for five or ten people, you know. It's uh, they're not my painting videos because they're not very professional, uh, you know. People, I don't get a lot of views on them. Um, I do, I do them mainly just because I enjoy figure painting. And uh, I've come to the stage in life where I'm thinking, well, I'm not fuss, not showing it, you know. I'm quite happy showing my my works. So. So, right, we'll cut the video off here where I'll, I'll work out where I'm going. Right, guys, I've put a, just two base coats of the bronze green uh, on the the trousers and the the jacket. I've put a base, because I had the, I wanted to, it looks a nice faded green, so I've put the RAL green, uh, the RAL 6011, and I'm not even going to pronounce that again. Uh, I've put that on the, the helmet cover. Uh, and it's quite nice actually. I'd, I'd, the other ones was, I'd, I'd messed around, well not messed around, but the other woodland pattern ones I've done uh, with these figures, uh, I've just lightened up different greens that I had. Uh, but that's that's um, that's looking all right. Now, what will happen is when I do the other colours on that, once I've done that, I'll get a lighter colour and uh, and bleach it out. So just put a wash over the top and bleach that that helmet cover down uh, some more so it won't be as bright that's the that's the idea anyway but what i'm going to do next is using german 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 camo beige uh, world war ii uh, i've had it a while as you can see uh, i'm going to put that as the base coat onto the uh, combat body armor and uh, we'll do a bit of that now as well well if we can actually see ourselves again taking some access paint off as I say I did for, I mean it's not so bad on a large surface area a base coat as this just to put your paintbrush straight down but you'll often see once you put it in your palette I use my own homemade wet palette uh, once you've once you've put it in you'll always end up with a blob of paint and when you put that paint down on your figure it'll quite often leave like a pear shaped or a tear tear shape type of uh, effect on it um, and that's not always good on something like this with a wide surface area. You can, you know, you can blend that paint in. Uh, but uh, I prefer to get rid of a, a, a small amount of it on the the paper towel that I've got just in front of the figure. Now I might do the next bit off camera. I mean, I seem to have got bits of sand just about everywhere. But the camo beige, it gives a nice... I have got some other beige, but this, it's weird. Different paint manufacturers, uh, you know, you, you name it, they'll put a label on something and it don't look anything like the next manufacturer. Um, I've got some other beige and it doesn't really look anything like this but that's what I'm saying just mix and match you know don't get tied in too much to to what it says on the bottle use a colour for what you want to use it for right before I stuff anything else up I shall uh, do the next bit off camera right I sometimes work like this uh, not, sometimes I'll be doing you know, just especially if I'm doing like a thousand Napoleonics, that I will get into a you know trousers, get all them done, then go on to the next bit, get all that done. Uh, but on one-offs like this, I'll sometimes range around the figure, 
Um, I just wanted to get a bit of definition in my own mind where, where things were. So, you know, we've got our we've got our combat body armour, we've got our helmet cover, we know definitions of you know where things start and stop. Uh, so now we're gonna go back to the the trousers themselves. I'll just quickly remix that paint up as it seems to have separated a bit. Uh, I've done a it's a bit hard to say really um, probably probably a fit almost probably a 50 50 mix of the bronze green and the Rail 6011 <laughs> let's just call it that <laughs> but the helmet cover green and that's going to be our highlight on the on the actual uh, trousers next right guys you're not going to see a massive jump up on uh, on colors yet on highlights uh, but we've done our 50 50 mix I've changed brushes I'm using a where is it Gav come on here we go three zero this is actually my main brush that I use for I'm one of these I a lot of people say oh use a larger brush use the tip and you know you cover more area and go faster and you you probably do uh, but I do prefer using smaller brushes and the three zero gets used for 28s 18s uh, 10s and 6s uh, I find it's just about right for me uh, but uh, we'll keep increasing the helmet green, as we call she'll call it, <laughs> into the trouser green, and uh, and bring up the highlights uh, some more. Right, we're slowly going up the highlights. We keep adding uh, more of that helmet cover green in. <laughs> um, I can't even give you a, a really. A, I, I literally, this is me way of mixing. Where is it, Gav? Come on, show. Right. Uh, this little stick, it's an old barbecue skewer, and it's, uh, well it's not old, it was new when I had it, but, <laughs> but um, I've had this, uh, I call it the sacred stirring stick, it gets, uh, obviously I have to take the paint off the end every so often, but uh, I've probably had this little stirring stick for about, snapped off barbecue stick for probably about 10 years or more, um, and I just literally put it in the paint and then move it over to the other blob of paint and mix it in, so I, I really can't give you, in fact I'm doing it now as we're talking, I can't really give you a, any real indication of ratios. Uh, and to be honest with you, all I can really do on these figures is give you an idea of what I'm doing, you know. Uh, there's no point trying to copy somebody off, just off rote, you know. It's, it's just to give you an idea of how I do things. And as I say, you know, uh, some of the ideas are my own, some are other people's. You know, you just use what's what works for you. Um, but it really does. It, it it really is just say, oh well, yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good idea, Gav. I like roughly those colours because um, very rarely will somebody's colours end up like somebody else's. It really is just a case of you getting the idea and running with it yourself and, and throwing your own how to, you know, how you want something to look. I'm probably going to go up two more with this yet uh, in highlights and then I'll probably introduce some shadow areas in certain places. It can be done a thousand and one ways how you want to put either shadows in first, shadows in afterwards. I tend to, especially working on individual figures, I go like this. I build up all the highlights I want to until maybe the last one. Then I go right the way back to the shadow area uh, and I just work in uh, shadow wash. Uh, I'm not I'm not a huge fan of working with, with inks particularly. I'm quite happy working with my paints that I just, I just wash, make into a wash and put them in areas that I think need deeper, darker shadows and help a bit of definition there. And then I will throw probably usually one more highlight at them uh, just to highlight certain areas again. Right guys, I've been highlighting up another twice. Uh, I can't really, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> uh, but you're looking at that anyway, uh, which doesn't particularly show up massively well uh, against the darker background but uh, you could say well you don't really need uh, a sh any more shadow area and you could probably get away with that 
uh, but I probably will put some shadow areas into this bellows pocket here maybe a bit underneath uh, I always tend to put it under the undercut of the jacket obviously because it's a metal figure it's a war games figure you're not going to get there's always going to be some infill unless you're going to absolutely go to town on it and chisel it out and everything and you know no, <laughs> that's not happening. Uh, so yeah, we'll be putting a bit of black on there. Then we're going to go on and do the, the combat body armour and we'll take it from there. Right guys, uh, this is the type of, if you put it over your nail, that's the type of paint wash I'm going to be putting into the shadow areas. So this is rubber black. It's a fantastic brownie black. Uh, without being too brown, if that makes sense. I'll just give you another example. This one's had more paint on it. Now, you know what I said about wiping your, slightly wiping, you, you, you're just dabbing the excess paint off onto a towel. You get these, right at the end here, you get these little round bits. Uh, again, it depends what you're working on to, to you know, uh, how, how messed up it will be but uh, you try and avoid that if you can uh, again it's just a demonstration but it also helped to show actually that that build up so yeah that's roughly what you what you want to be looking at uh, so we'll have a we'll have a go into these shadow areas and, uh, and see what it might be a tad too heavy on the wash yet but we'll see right where are you going to go Gav uh, we'll go under. I don't normally do this one first, so I might have to readdress this afterwards. But go under the CBA, which is a combat body armor. Um, it wasn't called CBA back in the day, but when I was in, it was CBA. Well, we also had the Neba jacket, which this more or less is, but um, just call it combat body armor or CBA is the uh, probably the best. So if we've done that side, we'll get this one done as well. Uh, be careful how long you leave your brushes out of the water, as in I would normally have washed that off before applying the next bit of paint. Because uh, you, you mainly, yes, the washes tend to soak into your bristles more, but you tend to be painting more on the tip of the brush, and that will dry out fairly quickly. So keep the, uh, the turnover in the water quite often, keep it there. Again, I'm still, although it's a wash, I'm still wiping the majority off. And the beauty with 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 putting a wash in is your uh, you, you don't have to uh, put it as heavy in some places than others. And you can also add it in. I'll always go around after the. I've actually done the entire figure and re, re more or less black line really, but without it being too black. Uh, also rehydrate your, although this is in a wet palette, uh, your brush bristles will soak a lot of the, the wash up. So, uh, you know, again, all I do is I get, where's my little stick? I get my little pointy stick. I just put it in the water. So I've literally got a blob of water on the end and uh, it's not very scientific, <laughs> but that's how I do it. So I'm, I'm just gonna go around, have another look what I wanna do. Uh, there's some places, until I've painted like the water bottles and well, water canteens, y y there's bits that I can't really do much more with the shadow areas until I know uh, what my other colors are, but uh, but we'll go around a bit more uh, and then uh, we'll start working some highlights on the, on the CBA, on the combat body armor. Uh, do the highlights. I'll be using the same rubber black in places for the deeper shadow areas. These got really gungy, as we used to say in the army, so really dirty. Uh, rolling around, uh, you know, Marines in Huey. Well, in any combat situation, you want to be on your belt buckle, uh, as this guy is, uh, and you'd be quite often rolling out of a situation over and over into a, a new, you know, uh, position to refill magazines or to to uh, find another fire position. A uh, quick show and tell on the on the next highlight. Uh, I'll be building up from this, which is wood base from uh, again AK from their armored fighting vehicle range. So it does the, you know entrenching tools and stuff like that on the or pioneer tools on the tanks and things. Uh, again, 
brand is entirely up to you. Again, I have no, obviously no tie-ins with any of these. Uh, I've really got into these. I do enjoy them. Uh, I like them a lot. Uh, but again, it doesn't matter what the colour is. I'm using, as we say, we're using Vallejo. Uh, beige brown as our base, which has already been put on. And we're going to mix that 50-50. There ain't a huge difference, but enough. And then we'll go fairly quick up to a highlight with that one. I'll probably do all that off camera. Uh, I'll shout you out another, I'm probably gonna add in another color just to, and uh, no, I haven't got any. Sometimes I'll just use any light color that I happen to have on my palette, um, but the ones I've got, I don't particularly want to use. So so yeah, we'll, we'll do, we'll lighten up as we did with the trousers. So the, just the two colors just keep highlight them until we can't get any more out of them and then I'll probably put one more highlight on uh, defining defining the the, 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 the the extra pockets and that you've got on on here uh, to give them a bit of a highlight and then we're gonna gunge them all up uh, again gungy meaning dirty uh, we're gonna dirty them all up with some shadow areas and uh, I won't actually do the the soil and, and you know all the general detritus that you do when you go rolling around on the floor in a battle because uh, I want to use that on I've got to do the boots now and I need to do the entire uh, that I, I do all the muck in one go so it all ties in with each other but uh, yeah we'll, we'll work on the CBA next right guys uh, as you can see uh, I've actually done the boots off camera you got a bit, I got a bit carried away <laughs> uh, the canvas on the side and uh, and leather uh, at different points, usually on the heels, toes, um, at the front of the laces, and I believe a strip up the back. Although, don't quote me on the strip up the back, um, I can't remember, but I've put it in. Uh, just remember our own British Army jungle boots. Uh, anyway, um, I've done the highlights on this up until one last highlight. I'm going to now put some some shadow areas onto the, the combat body armour get most of the most of the paint off put it just to see what you've got on your brush Put it, uh, and how it's performing really uh, put it in the in the, the, the you know the real deep crevices where it's going to be shad shadowed anyway but uh, you can always you can always bring this these shadow areas up uh, with some more highlights you've still got the paint on the palette if you've got a wet palette and if you haven't got a wet palette you know it's not hard to mix another another bit of paint up uh, we'll put a final highlight on top of that but as I say I'm just going to water that down actually it's a bit uh, heavy on the wash uh, when we get to our, our putting our grime on it and you know mud and well not so much mud but just just general grime from rolling around, uh, there'll be more colours brought into that. You can you could leave in some instances you could leave shadow areas like this and work them in right at the end because obviously I've got bandolier slings there to to work over with paint yet yeah, paint over I should say and things but um, the nature of this body armour is I need to see some some shadow areas and things like that in it first so all that is is the rubber black heavily diluted as I say it's not an ink it's just a it's just the paint, the normal paint that I would have used on these boots. I had it on the, I had it on the desk, the paint bottle, and I thought, well, I might as well do these boots while I'm, while I'm here. Uh, I won't use the rubber black probably to do the rifle. I'll use a, a NATO black, which I'll show you in a bit, and put some colours in there just to get a bit of definition going. But I want to do the helmet first, I think, before we, we do that. Again, we can add more shadow areas when 
when the time comes. These got really quite dark and, and gungy and again, sorry. I haven't been in the army for it's gotta be nearly thirty years now, but uh, well, a bit less than that, but you still hold on to some of the scenes. <laughs> especially when you're painting other military subjects. Right, we're going to leave that for shadow areas for now because there is maybe probably a bit more to go on that. And we've got to re-highlight a few areas anyway, so we'll leave that as that. Uh, before, I, before I do the last highlight on the jacket though, I'm going to... I'm going to do the bandolier, which is this here, and that, car that covers the the uh, clips uh, to feed the magazine so that will be done first I think before we do it just so I can see where this strap is and everything and, and, and highlights in relation to it uh, I'll probably do some so I'll probably do a base coat on the rest of the webbing as well so uh, webbing being uh, you know the, the, the water bottles uh, first I think believe that's a first field dressing uh, as in so a, a bandage, compression bandage, uh, and uh, it looks like we've got a, a ammunition pouch uh, down here. So would that be an ammunition pouch there? Yeah, that's probably an ammunition pouch that side as well. So yeah, we'll come back and I'll talk through the colours. Right, guys, as you can see, I've uh, I've done some well all of the webbing really. So we've gone with a water bottle cover that's again like that khaki colour. Uh, I've actually used khaki grey which I've put away now but uh, yeah khaki grey which is more or less a bit like this canvas you know it's not that far off it probably a bit more yellow than that but uh, uh, that's what I use as a base for the right hand water uh, can, uh, bottle. Uh, the first field dressing again uh, th these can be green, they can be in this colour, and I'll try and mix them up just for a bit of definition. Uh, I've got this clump of green here with the uh, the webbing for the magazine pouches, uh, the bandolier, so I put a tanned watercolour uh, pouch in amongst that lot just to break it up. If I put another green one there, it'd just be a big clump of green. Uh, and then on this side, we haven't got as much green, so I've I've left this pouch green. Uh, they've all got to be muddied up yet. Also, uh, although I've put some shadow area in there, uh, they'll be needed to be like a def show on the camera, Gav. It might help uh, a definition line along here as well, because it's they're, they're actually you know wrapped around the uh, on a, a yoke on a webbing sling. Uh, so yeah, that's what we've got done so far. Uh, now we will be on to oh the uh, I should tell you the. I use the brown violet from Vallejo uh, for the uh, for the uh, bandolier, uh, and then I just use what I'd got on the pal on the palette for the. Yes, that's quite a warm green, and I've then put lighter, colder greens on top. But it, it, I don't mind, and plus there's going to be a bit of a muck on top of those yet. So, yeah, that's what's gone on top of those. So it's more or less anything out the palette. I can't even really give you a you know this is the highlight because I've just been going through. That's the beauty of using a wet palette. You've got paint on there, and I just use that, save waste another paint. Uh, and the same with uh, this. The left-hand water bottle was uh, Russian green from uh, AK, uh, and again that was just highlighted, and, and obviously all shadow areas again put in with the rubber black, which is the same as the boots, but uh, watered down obviously. Uh, so yeah, we've uh, we've progressed there. And uh, now we're going to progress on to the helmet. Right, guys, as you can see, I've got some uh, paintwork done on the on the helmet cover. It looks fairly, uh, especially when I'm close up under the camera, it doesn't look particularly great, but uh, it, it does its job. Uh, we've got on there. We've got the darkest flat brown which is roughly, well it isn't roughly, it's this, flat brown. Uh, the orange is ochre brown. 
the darker leaves are Luftwaffe cam green slightly bright but uh, as I say we're going to we're going to bleach it down slightly uh, and we've got reflective green for the uh, lighter color but in between inside the inside the blobs of reflective green I've left the outline of reflective green but I just put a tiny bit of Africa core tank crew uh, from Panzer Aces so what I intend to do now is get one of the lighter colors I've got on the which is probably the was it the wood base or something like that uh, and we're gonna uh, just make a wash of that uh, well before I do that um, I'm just going to put some some rubber black again washed down and put it in these little dimples here where they would put uh, branches and grass and stuff if you were you know I suppose more in the, uh, the against the Warsaw Pact and think oh good god sorry guys I'm drifting off here right let's go through that again well I'm not going to go through all the colours again but I'm just saying I'm going to bleach this out with a with a light coloured uh, colour that I've got you know something something like uh, oh, what was it that wood grain that I used uh, we're going to bleach out the or we'll put a wash maybe two or three maybe just one depending uh, but before I do that you've got these little dimples here and they would be for putting foliage through uh, more for like Warsaw Pact and places like you know in the on the German plains really I suppose uh, but yeah uh, we're going to do that next uh, and put some we'll put some shadow in first with the rubber black as well and then we'll bleach it down right so all I did on that was again make the the wash up if it's a bit too thick let me uh, well I put it all over the all over the helmet uh, have a second brush standing by so another one standing by this was one of the larger ones I was using earlier uh, keep it nice and wet and once you've put your wash on uh, don't put it over the entire helmet, put it over say half the helmet or a quarter of the helmet, a third of the helmet, whatever you want to do. But once it's on, if it's looking like, oh my life, I've painted over nearly everything I've got there, get your wet brush and just move that paint around and you'll be surprised how it'll, obviously, you, you know, you're adding more water to the mix and uh, it won't be as, as heavy as you, as you thought it might be. Um, and as I say, don't panic. At the end of the day, you can paint it over again if that's what you've got to do. But uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think. As I say, whenever I'm showing them up close up on the camera, they always look a bit more tatty than uh, than they tend to look uh, from looking down on the the table. Uh, we put a bit of shadow under the helmet. Uh, obviously, as you guys know, or you might not know, but there, there's a helmet inner. So on American helmets, there's two helmets, helmet inner and helmet outer, held on by the, the clips. Uh, I believe uh, the, the sculptors put a, a helmet inner. It could just be it could just be metal, but uh, I've I've gone under there with a the rubber black to put shadow area in, and I'll put some more of that in when I've done the face. Uh, we're going to be doing the M16 now, the rifle and the sling, uh, purposely because. You're going to be messing around with black. If you do all the face now, uh, you guarantee you're going to get black on the face. <laughs> and it's a lot easier to get work off if you've put your facial tones on top of the rifle that's black. It's a lot easier to get that painted out than it is painting black out on a on a already painted face. Right, guys, I've worked on the M16. So we're looking at a... Oh, where have we got it here? NATO Black. Sorry, guys, uh, that was my wife. <laughs> uh, right, uh, yeah, M16. So we've got NATO Black. That's the base colour. It's uh, quite a quite a, a flattish black. Uh, it's it's obviously what they use on uh, if you see British Army vehicles. Uh, you know the, the black and green uh, this is a type of black that they use on them uh, so we've done that as a base color if you can see it what else have we done Gav uh, then went over with a, a bit of mixture of uh, a 50 50 uh, dark sea blue and the NATO black on the plastic areas of the rifle 
so I'll just make sure the tripod doesn't go flying as Archie gets through. Uh, yeah, so that's all the plastic areas of the rifle was uh, was painted in that. Uh, I then, uh, in fact, did I? Yeah, I did actually. I went to the, I went over the metal areas as well. So that central part's all metal there. Uh, obviously the barrel and that. Uh, I then went over with a dark sea blue highlight over at the plastic. And uh, there's not really much to show you on the other side, really. Uh, I then took rather than I did think of put, putting some metallic and painting over it over it, but it was a bit too heavy for what I wanted, so I just used a pencil. Uh, it's a it can be a bit light for for war game type figures, but uh, this is painting for the camera, so uh, I indulge myself. So I uh, I put some graphite. So all you do is you very lightly rub your pencil over the top, or even get some sandpaper and rub your graphite on that, so you've got some powder. But you know, I just gently rub the side of a pencil, so not the point, but just the side over it, over the metal areas, and like the raised areas here. And uh, um, I actually just just did that, and then buffed it up slightly on the raised areas, and then on the plastic areas, I then went over with uh, Luftwaffe uniform blue, uh, just to give the raised plastic areas one last highlight. The sling is Russian tank green that I've already had on the palette and uh, that was mixed in with a bit of canvas and then a tiny bit of canvas on the on the actual uh, you know top of the um, highlights that's the word I was after right so that's it uh, I've run out of time for the moment I knew I would do so just as we get towards the end that's what the phone call was telling me uh, so uh, yeah uh, I'm probably going to do this one as a late one tonight uh, while my uh, wife and my pop snoring their heads off I will complete the uh, the facial details obviously all the flesh and uh, we'll see if we can get the base painted up as well all right guys uh, there has been a break of about 16 hours I don't know I ran out of time I uh, couldn't finish it and uh, so uh, what I did last night uh, it was too it was again too much noise in the background for me to, to do anything uh, on video uh, so what I did was go round and dirtied up uh, the figure uh, now I used uh, some uh, as I've, you can see, I put a base coat of plague brown on the. Uh, so Gaff searches for it just to show you. So just in case you want to know what it looks like, rather than just me telling you, that's plague brown. Uh, it'll give a nice warm tone underneath the the skin of this guy. Uh, but it's, I've what I've tried to do is I, I know that there's a lot of orange dirt in. Uh, in Vietnam or sections of Vietnam uh, but the 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 fighting within Hue uh, I often just saw more of your standard really standard dark dirt uh, so I've done a more or less a standard dark dirt for me which is uh, burnt umber or is it burnt umber or is it raw umber I never all the umbers I get mixed up with burnt umber so again let's say you know there we go that's what we're looking at uh, as a base uh, silver grey um, dry brush lightly on top don't go heavy with the silver grey or you you look like it these in a, in a, a frosty uh, the north german plains uh, but I, it gives it a very nice nice highlight uh, and i enjoy it a lot uh, i've put this little wall as if it's a bit of painted garden wall or something uh, i have you can't really see it there's about five dry brushes of whatever was on my palette uh, including the greens and that just to show a bit of you know mildewy type stuff but a bit of orange up the the base of the wall uh, again nothing nothing major uh, this this little bit of white plastic card here was added at the last minute and that's going to be a discarded uh, cigarette you know a packet of cigarettes discarded uh, um, so I'm going to paint that up uh, probably off camera but we'll we'll get that done as well uh, I'm going to paint straight onto it. There's there's no actual uh, um, uh, there's there, there's no actual primer on that, so uh, we'll hope for the best on that one. 
I just wanted that bit of extra gunge on there. I uh, I use those T lights, are they? Those little candle things in the little metal foil things uh, to stretch sprue, and that's what I've done there. So this is modelling sprue that's just been heated up and pulled. Uh, it's it's a bit bigger. I'm never really good at stretch sprue. There's a sm there's a thinner one on the side there, uh, but I I uh, snip those off and. Uh, Stuck them down. Uh, I, for quickness, I used super glue, but I normally put PVA on them and just leave them overnight. But it was super glue, so just be careful if you're going to paint. Give it a good while to gas off, or use some fi uh, some fixer uh, to to make it go off. You know, literally uh, in seconds. Uh, but metallic paint, put on that, and then uh, I just I'd got some blue, I believe, some dark blue, but really watered down that was on the palette again. And I just washed that over just to take off the edge of the metallics. It wasn't too, too much. I wanted to show them part of the environment, if that makes sense. I uh, just roughly sprinkled round again. I didn't want them to be lying in a. We spent rounds everywhere, but uh, but yeah, that's what we've gone for on that. Uh, I'm going to keep it like that. Mess. I've been making these bases quite messy, just because uh, whenever I've seen them, they are quite messy on the colour photos of the Battle of Hui. Uh, you know, bits of detritus everywhere from paper to, to I say, different size calibre uh, cartridge cases uh, from the spent rounds, you know, discarded cigarette packets, can, old ration tins, cans, you know, you name it, bits of rusty metal. Uh, but yeah, so I've gone over again with the, the Parasite Brown into the uh, into darker areas. I've also used some uh, some of the burnt umber. Again, watered down a lot though. Uh, I've put some definition darker lines in, and dark um, and black. Well, almost black lined. It was a. It is black, but it was a very watered down black. So you sometimes have to go over a couple of times. But that's been put down, and like under the helmet there to give a shadow area. Well, where you can see shadow area under the helmet. Um, I think that's about everything. Um, problem is, without seeing the video, I can't remember what <laughs> did I tell you about the. I believe I told you about the M16. Uh, but uh, I can't remember now. <laughs> and I can see some. It's amazing when you look under the camera; you can just see, you can see some light bits there. That's going to have to be taken care of under there. But yeah, uh, as I said to you guys, I think I've done this already. But I apologise, my memory goes in and out with my head problems. But uh, uh, yeah, you know, instead of going for a, a a a very black black basic black or whatever you want to call it, I, I use the NATO black on that. I think I did tell you all this. Uh, and highlighted it with with uh, dark sea blue and, and Luftwaffe uniform blue and then used a pencil and then just buffed up areas just to give it a metallic look in places. I, I think it's a bit more subdued than using metallic paint on, on a 28mm. Uh, and when it's varnished, it, we'll see how, you know, if it still stands up because under the varnish sometimes just using graphite it can sometimes uh, be you know have it's, it's the slight metallic effect robbed off it but uh, we'll see so yeah we'll get on with the with the the flesh and uh, that's as I say we've got a base of parasite brown to give it a warm tone and we'll be going hitting it next with medium flesh then I believe flat flesh uh, and then just lighten that up and then in places we'll put some we'll put some I don't know, maybe some scarlets or, or I don't know yet. Uh, when it comes to putting glazes on the faces to, to show the cheek areas and things like that, I uh, I go with whatever hits me at the time. Sometimes I put a bit of magenta in there, sometimes scarlet, sometimes uh, whole brown or, or whole red, which is like a, a reddy brown. Uh, yeah, so, so you can see I've gone around the, uh, dirty the boots up a bit. And gone round the the trousers, the bottom of the trousers, uh, and I've put you know brown on them first, the dark brown. Uh, again, heavily watered down though, and then put the just small bits of the the orange. I didn't want to overpower it uh, with orange. Uh, same on. You often find your your water bottles, they get quite gungy. Uh, they're normally rolling around on your back, and if you've rolled around a few times to move to a different position, they all pick up the grime fairly quick. Uh, but yeah, there we go. Uh, I don't know if I said, I don't think I did. Uh, obviously a lot of these, the, the combat body armour, the, the helmets, as you all know, 
in Vietnam that guys loved putting their home states on or they were short timers or you know whatever they you know anti-war symbols peace was it peace symbols and all that stuff um, I you could probably get away with a peace symbol just about uh, size wise but it's no point trying to be too clever uh, I believe with, with with putting writing on one the writing would be in my opinion way too big for the helmet unless you're really really clever and two it would to be honest with you it would just get lost in amongst you know amongst this you know when you see a close up color photo of a, a Vietnam soldier or marine uh, you know that they, they if you're looking at the helmet covers and what they've got written on they're fairly faded anyway because it's mainly done in biro and stuff and or maybe the, the odd marker pen and they they tend to fade out fairly quick so it would get lost amongst you know whichever helmet cover pattern you've you've got on so uh anyway i'm rambling again as always so let's get some uh, some paint on this guy and let's get this one finished right so far on the face i have put on top of the plague uh, plague parasite brown I keep putting it plague brown i think i've got one of those as well uh, We've put some Vallejo uh, medium flesh, so that's what we're looking at. Then we've put, and I've not mixed this together. That's going on as quite, you know, stark highlights, which you'll see in a minute. And we've got the Panzer Aces uh, flat flesh. You can just about see it. And in the, the next one, when I switch the video off, I'm going to be doing uh, sunny skin tone. Now, you see that's quite bright on there. Uh, and you can see I've put quite quite bright highlights, uh, but we're going to be putting a thin down wash of sunny skin tone over a lot of that, plus then some uh, some glazes. But I wanted the brightness to begin with, uh, so I can tone it down if that makes sense. I've still got to put some. Uh, I don't believe I've got any on my palette, so I'm going to have to mix some. But uh, put some type of whether it's uh, I might actually use a silver silver grey from doing, I've still got it on the wet palette for doing the uh, the base uh, for the whites of the eyes uh, I don't use, I don't ever use the pure white or anything like that um, and uh, and then I'll just do a tiny little dot sometimes I just show right in the corners uh, the white um, it just depends, you don't want them looking like you know two fried eggs if you, if, if you can help it Right guys, um, I used this wine, oh, here we, where are you, there you go, wine red from AK. Uh, it's quite a strong 4A shadow area. I could have used the, this is AK's, I believe it's slightly more orangey red than Vallejo shadow. It's not so dark, but I quite like that. I use that a lot as well. Uh, you can see the, let's get out of it, Gav, so people can see. Uh, you can see the difference, wine, uh, wine red, and uh, the shadow, shadow flesh. Uh, obviously, you can just go straight to the shadow flesh, as that's what it's meant for. Uh, but as I say, I'm I'm fairly cheap, <laughs> and I got the, I painted a packet of Winston's from the ration boxes that have been left behind. Uh, a roughly painted packet of Winston's, which was a cigarette brand from Vietnam. I had to go and look it up, uh, but. Uh, yeah, I've um, I was painting that with the wine red, and all I did was uh, take a, a tiny piece on the older wooden <laughs> wooden stirring stick, uh, put it to one side, put a, a fair dab of water on the stick, and just washed it up so uh, I could put it into this, the shadow areas. It, it was a bit strong on one side, I believe this side, and I had to re put some some medium flesh tone back on top. But the, I say the beauty of the wet, wet palette is. Uh, they stay like that for a few days even though I don't put mine in the fridge uh, I just put a plastic piece of uh, styrene sheet over the top of it and uh, it keeps it uh, it keeps it fairly wet for a, a two or three days uh, but yeah these are guy he's done I'm not going to do any stubble on him or anything like that I wanted a fairly bright youngish face not too stubbly uh, I think the red works well I'm quite a, a liker of putting the reds in uh, they might not be the more artistic let's put it that way than than real probably but i think it i think it works on on different scales of figures and uh, i quite like using it so under there particularly 
uh, you can't really see but up on the brow under the helmet uh, and uh, you can use different colors like brown is quite a, a cold uh, tone and you can put brown in there or whole br or whole red which as I say is a dark dark very dark uh, well the AK one is anyway is a very dark uh, browny red uh, again the Vallejo is slightly more red uh, and you can do that if you want darker shadows now what I've got to do now with our guy here is go over um, you can still see bits I can see a bit down there uh, try and go over the places uh, which I haven't uh, painted very well uh, and there's another bit down there it's amazing what you see through the camera uh, and we'll try and get those blackened out um, so they're not so visible uh, I'll put some photographs up at the end and we'll call this guy done he, yes he needs obviously still got a bit to be shown, done there as well uh, he's yet to be varnished uh, I use my airbrush and I use uh, matte varnish from Galleria on my figures uh, from Newton and Windsor uh, I put a bit of uh, uh, what do you put in them Gav? Uh, probably a few guys that don't airbrush don't do the modeling side of things uh, I use some of the Mr Thinner a uh, couple little drops in it uh, but obviously it's a, it's an acrylic varnish I believe I just put that in there it seems to work quite well uh, but uh, yeah, you can obviously paint the figure with a, with a brush. Just don't put it on too heavy, uh, and you won't get the shine and the uh, the frosting if you're going to use a brush. But yeah, I, I really like these Empress miniatures. I say I have no connection with Empress. Uh, you know that I, I buy them. I just really like these figures. Uh, as I say, Vietnam is a subject I've been interested in since I was about eighteen or nineteen, and. Uh, it doesn't go away. I, I often, you know, looking up things and reading up things. Sea, air and land, uh, you know, it's all good. Uh, I focused on the Marine Corps, uh, funny as I'm an ex-infantry <laughs> soldier, but uh, I, just because what I liked about the Marine Corps in Vietnam, it's nothing about fighting abilities or anything like that, you know, inter-service rivalries. It's just the fact that the Marine Corps was a self-contained unit. It had everything, you know, it's, it had its own aircraft to support it and, and whatever. Um, and I like the area that they were also working in um, so that that's the only reason is um, but uh, I will be getting some uh, once I've got a bit more flush with money which in the UK these days is hard to come by but <laughs> when I do uh, I will be getting some of their uh, uh, Arvin range that they brought out uh, they look really nice uh, and I'll probably add a, a couple more bits to the uh, to my Marine Corps as well um, as I say, I'll, I'll probably end up selling them all in the end, um, uh, only to but only to repaint them because uh, I will, I will can I will continue. Uh, I, I just think the I say Vietnam is a thing I like. I noticed Rubicon are bringing a Rubicon models are bringing a Vietnam range range out themselves. I, I doubt I'll do the plastic infantry side of it. No, no other reason why I'm quite happy with these Empress figures, uh, but I would probably get at least. Uh, you know a couple of vehicles of some description so that's uh, that's more or less it as I say we've got a we've got to put a, uh, a just just you know cover some areas that I've obviously missed which is going to be a nightmare because I've now got to try and get it over my painted figure uh, all those areas I actually thought I've gone back to them twice but they just keep evading my paintbrush <laughs> so, so yeah uh, you can obviously make these walls and that bigger, you know, I'm, I'm just saying it's either being knocked off or it's a, it's a small garden retaining, <laughs> I don't care, it's just a bit of rubble for the guy to be put into context with, uh, but obviously you can build those higher and that whatever suits you, and yes he is over the, over the edge, I didn't really want to get any bigger bases than I'm using for these figures, uh, so um, yeah, he, he's, uh, it was either hang him over slightly over the back or over the front and I thought over the back looked a bit more logical really. So thanks guys, I'm rambling again, it's going to be a giant video, I said it wasn't going to be, but uh, it has probably turned out to be, I don't even know how many minutes I've got on the clock yet, but uh, until I upload it, but uh, as I say, it's a subject I really like, uh, It'll I'll be keep doing these ones, I will be doing some, some NVA and, and Viet Cong uh, stuff as well, um, they won't be left out, uh, but uh, it, they're a joy to paint, as I say, I really like them, there's not a huge amount of clean up on the figures, as they're all fairly new, so obviously the, the moulds aren't busted up or anything. 
Uh, and I like the service you get from the guys at Empress as well. As I say, no, no connection. It's just me uh, giving a big up to or a shout out to a business I think you know deserves a shout out. So, thanks guys. Thanks for sticking by this and uh, and in hopefully you know enjoying the video. Uh, what's the next figure we've got coming up? Gav doesn't have a clue. No, I probably do. Yes, I do. Uh, be a thirty years war Avon Post figure. As you know, I'm doing that commission for Messrs Minis. Well, I keep saying the last three figures are almost done, and then I find something else to do on them. <laughs> but they are almost done. So I've got the one last figure, which again I will paint either as a one-off like this, or a uh, or a you know a, a section of videos. But I, I I just think the voltage or one just went on way too long and that has got one more video to go as I put a base on which I'll probably do on camera so uh, look after yourselves as I say more figure painting we're, we're a bit in the not in the doldrums but I can't show you lots of different painted figures at the moment uh, simply because I'm still on the Napoleonic commission of and obviously I can only show you what I've got there and I don't keep wanting to show you one unit after another as they're all the same uh, I'm I'm probably one unit away now from completing that that side of it, and I've got uh, another. Pro I'm back again, <laughs> just to say there'll be some photos at the end of the video. Cheers guys.